chart watchers in Decision Point Faithful. Welcome to this Monday, May 3rd, 2021 episode of Decision Point. My name's Aaron Swinland and I'm here with my father, Carl Swinland from decisionpoint.com. And we have a lot to share with you. So I'm not going to even do more of the preamble, dad. I'm just, I think we're ready to sink right in. How's everything going up there? Everything's fine. Excellent. All right, well, we have lots to cover here. Um, we're gonna, of course, do our regular spy and indicator overview with Carl. Uh, he's also gonna talk to us about market valuation right now, certainly a concern. I'm gonna tell you about some new PMO cell signals that just appeared on many of our index charts. I'm gonna give you the update for Nat Gas, and we'll also look at gold miners. That's becoming a pretty interesting area of the market. And then I'm going to get into my diamond of the week. So let's go ahead and, and just go right into it. There's really not much to uh, discuss, but we are running a special currently for our Decision Point uh, trading room and Decision Point show viewers. You can save 50% off your first month. All you have to do is put in the coupon code SAVE50 at checkout and you will get 50% off your first month of any of our Decision Point uh, reports. Okay, well, that seems to be all it wants to do, so we will just get right to it. Okie doke, here we go. Um, uh, I'm going to start uh, out, of, out of sequence because I can. Uh, <laughs> uh, the John Hoskin published his monthly remarks just uh, to, uh, the, today, I think, and uh, he has a chart in there that we don't keep, but the pr it's the price to revenue ratio for the S&P 500. And uh, as you can see, that it's unbelievably uh, overvalued at this point. Um, he, one of his comments, uh, he says, from this particular starting point, I expect that the S&P 500 will go nowhere for something like 20 years. And uh, that's probably right. If you, if you um, I'm not gonna show the chart, but you know, after the 1929 top and subsequently the crash, it took 20 years, about 20 years for the market to get back up to the 1929 level. And now here, and here's at 2000, now this isn't the price chart, but you know what it looks like, mm -hmm. and this, the 2000 top, and it took about almost 20 years to get back up to that level. Uh, actually, no, I'm, I'm wrong. If this was, uh, no, that's right. Yeah, that's right. yeah, that's it. Maybe, yeah, okay. So, <laughs> yeah, so and just keep in mind, we have a real estate bubble, we have a stock market bubble, and commodities are really getting run up. When you're talking about inflation, those three areas, there is inflation going on for sure. Okay, let me move over to <clears throat> the, the market. Today, um, still did, was not able to make a new all-time high. We did get a PMO sell signal. I said I wasn't going to cover that, but that one <laughs> certainly stands out. Of <laughs> yes. course. Yes. Uh, there was a, a smaller volume, but it's not, it didn't contract, you know, a great deal. I wouldn't, you know, especially since it was a down, um, no, it wasn't a down day, barely up. It, it yeah. was, uh, I wouldn't put too much uh, stock in that. Looking at a one-year chart, we're at the top of a rising trend channel. And with the, this uh, PMO crossover, it's likely you can see the crossovers generally lead to problems. Uh, in this case, it didn't. <laughs> but, you know, I would be looking for some kind of pullback. Maybe it's the end of the world. Maybe it's just a couple, a couple of days or a week or two of pullback. Who knows? Mm -hmm. But it's in a in a delicate position right now. Uh, the 
I wanted to see the Silver Cross Index for the broad market. Again, I wrote an article about this, the NASDAQ composite um, Silver Cross Index is really crunching down so at 50% uh, of stocks with the Silver Cross, uh, with, it, with the upside crossover and buy signal. Yeah, so just to, to clarify, a Silver Cross is a 20, 50 day EMA positive crossover. So we're measuring how many uh, members of the NASDAQ in this case have their 20 above their 50 day EMA and it's only about half. Right, now here we got 90%, over 90% of the SP 500, but this is as high as it gets or as it has been and uh, slightly above this spot. And when they get these, uh, when they get up in that high range, you, you know, you can start looking for uh, a pullback. New highs and new lows today. Contraction of new new highs. Uh, no, uh, no, no, no big surprise there. Mm -hmm. And here, looking at the th three, the S and P fifteen hundred. We had the five hundred, the four hundred, and the six hundred, and. Uh, Notice the small caps are pulling back with their, they're at 76% of silver crosses right now. Our climax analysis, not really much of a climax, uh, not really any climaxes today, I should say. Um, short term indicators, the uh, STOs, um, B and V for breadth and volume. They're pulling back, which uh, is expected uh, after this uh, all-time high there a few days ago. PMO tag needs to be up there. I need to fix that next time I get a chance. Yeah, they've been really, um, the STOB in particular has really been kind of flat and all of them, you know, both the STOB and V seem to be just oscillating back and forth. And you can see through history, we usually don't see that kind of indecision, if you will, but that's, um, I guess we chalk that up really to a lot of sideways movement and indecision here in the market right now. Well, look, at here's the last uh, uh, two weeks anyway, it's been moving sideways, slightly higher, but, mm -hmm. but it's, uh, so you really need to have some kind of acceleration to get these uh, doing, you know, spikes. Mm -hmm. Golden Cross Index is at 97 percent. 97 percent is the uh, let's see, five times three is 15. Only 15 stocks in the S and P 500 are not on a Golden Cross buy signal. Um, again, it's as good as it gets, and it's not going to stay there for very long. I don't think. Yeah, it's pretty stretched. Right. And the ITBM and ITVM. Um, ITVM is starting to fall off while the price is going higher. And uh, same for the ITVM. Uh, Negative divergence. Yet another. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to move this thing out of my way that nobody can see. <laughs> uh, wanted to check on the 10 year yield. You'll notice uh, last week it broke out of the uh, falling wedge formation, which is really a flag. I uh, would call it a flag. And uh, today it broke that down. It got inside that flag again, but it closed, as you, you can see, the little tag here is closed outside of it. So I, I'm not. I'm not sure how much it's going to churn, keep churning uh, sideways or going to go higher, but it's not a good thing for the big tech stocks if, if this starts moving higher again, which, which I'm kind of thinking is going to. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. Gold, we got an ITTM, that's uh, intermediate term trend model buy signal. The, the, uh, it's a silver cross, the 20 uh, crossed up through the 50 EMA. Wow, what a what a pop on gold though. Um, we're still under that 200 day moving average and the PMO looks pretty good though, I have to say with that bottom above the signal line. Right. It's not, yeah, it's not, a, a, it's not oversold it. I'm sorry, overbought at all. So it's got plenty of room and the technical indicators to go higher. Although here you had a same level PMO roughly, and that was a blow off that occurred at that point. But uh, double, double bottom here, I think, I think we're going to work higher on that. Just to verify, we use the, the uh, ETF to generate the signals. Let's see, we've got, uh, yeah, we, we've got a crossover on the, on the gold uh, as well. We've got the 20 above the 50 on the gold. Gold miners, giving me some heartburn lately. Here it goes. It, it's very oversold and these these haven't updated yet today. So I'm thinking they're going to tick up. Oh, they must. Yeah. A pretty good strong day today on those gold miners. Right, right off the 50 day EMA and the 200. Very interesting. USO crude oil. Um, it's been in a range for you know, two months now. It seems like it should be popping out of there with that PMO buy signal in, in there, but it just isn't ready to do so. Yeah. I did have Greg Schnell in the uh, free DP trading room this morning, and he's definitely bullish on oil. Uh, his big heartburn right now is the dollar and trying to figure out what's going to happen with the dollar, because that obviously will, will affect commodities quite a bit. Yeah, I skipped the dollar, didn't I? I should have got it. Uh, yeah, it's um, kind of indecisive, got a slight uptrend to it, but uh, with the way they're passing stimulus is, uh, <laughs> I don't know how the dollar can hold up, Certainly. to be honest. Let's see, the uh, get a little bit longer range on it. So it is working its way higher, you'd have to say, but um, a lot of resistance. Yeah, really. Mm -hmm. And finally, uh, we've got treasury bonds um, looking a lot like the dollar. <laughs> <laughs> well, with the yields too, trying to, you know, if they're going to go higher, certainly that's going to put the pressure on the, the long yes. bonds. Yes. Let's see. I Well, let me... I wanted to go, I missed this, but the valuation, the PE ratio right now is uh, rounded off, it's at 45. So, you know, it's, it's, it's really moving up. It's, it's so overvalued. I know this is not anything when anybody needs to worry about, nobody cares mm -hmm. until, it, until it matters. <laughs> until it matters. That's and it, it is, this is awful, it really is. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then I wanted to, Look at the 30 year, just as, it's uh, very similar, of course. And yes, it broke out and it snapped back today. Um, when you see this kind of thing, you, you kind of think that it's going to go higher because uh, that's just a bullish uh, type of uh, uh, action. The PMO is just easing down, you know, and uh, but it is still falling in these, this kind of pick up the price before you see that uh, turning up. And I do believe I've covered it all. Oh my goodness. Okay, let's see if I can uh, fill up uh, the screen here for a bit. So you mentioned the um, S&P's new uh, sell signal, but we, didn't, uh, we did get two others today. First of all, I'll just tell you that the Dow 
industrials, they had their uh, negative crossover all the way back at the end of April. And so we're still seeing that negative momentum on the Dow. I've got an arrow in the way, but it's definitely been sideways uh, since, well, goodness, a couple of weeks now. And so now the PMO is, is tending back towards zero. But we also got a PMO cell signal on the NASDAQ 100, as you can see. And again, the same sort of action really sideways. And you know, when I look at this NASDAQ 100 chart, and honestly, when I look at the NASDAQ chart as well, all I can see is that double top brewing. <laughs> so I mean, it's not a very tall one, but overall it's just a, it's a pretty classic topping formation. So tech is just not, you know, I looked at the um, semiconductors and I'll, I'll show that chart. I didn't talk about it, but why not? We'll look at that really, we'll look at that after I show you the last year. Yeah. So also the S&P 100 got us a sell signal as well. So, you Before know- Before you leave this subject, could you yes. find the, uh, the golden silver cross index chart? Oh, in the, um, yeah, actually that's in this one. There you go. On the N, uh, the QQQ, the N, NASDAQ, uh, yeah, you're right. In that little further down, the NDX, NDX. There it is, I'm there sorry. You go. There we go. Now look at the, look at these indicators. Uh, the the uh, uh, stocks above the 20 EMA, second from the bottom, you notice how they, how they've, you know, they're dropping off quite sharply. I mean, they're, they're at what, 61 is this? No, 51. 51. Yes. So you know, there's quite a bit of weakness, even though the NASDAQ 100 is holding up pretty well price-wise. Uh, is You know, here again, you've got those giant tech stocks holding the prices price up, but you've got stuff falling off in the, uh, uh, in the smaller cap stuff breaking down. Yep. And you have yeah. the same kind of uh, picture on the uh, 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 OEX, yeah. The OEX just, there you go. Yep. BPI is the only thing that looks halfway decent here, but 98% uh, of the 100 stocks. So that means only two in the S&P 100 uh, don't have their 50 above their 200 day EMA. It's pretty overbought. Right. So we are still waiting on these numbers to come in um, as far as the stocks above their 20 and their 50. Um, just for uh, information to everybody, these charts that I'm showing right now, the Golden Cross Index, um, those DPA charts we were looking at earlier, our sector uh, chart list, all of these are available to our DP subscribers with annotations. And uh, dad, I know you keep those up um, pretty much daily. I so, do, daily, yeah. Yes, yeah, so if uh, you get to hear me uh, chat in the reports, but you could see exactly what Carl's thinking just by looking at uh, his annotations on these charts. So while you can get these charts on stockcharts.com, you're not gonna have these really nice annotations like you would get on our website. And for those of, you who are members and maybe didn't realize that you have this, this is where you can get those chart lists right here. So I just wanted to let everybody know that, but I promised a look at semiconductors. So let's look at uh, this SOXX, the SOX. And, you know, this has already been looking pretty, pretty sad for a while here. Um, you know, we've got the, again, here's that double top. Today, we actually lost that support at not only that 50 day EMA, but you can see right here, this support line, we've lost that too. So PMO is headed toward the zero line. You can see on balance volume is confirming this. And uh, the stock charts technical rank just tells you that among the um, ETFs that this one is starting to underperform the S&P and it's also underperforming its brethren of ETFs, if you will, with that stock charts technical rank. So, you know, semiconductors, not a great place to be. I know everybody wanted to see Micron in the trading room today. 
And again, it's just a really, uh, looks like a topping formation, maybe even a triple top here, trying to hold on to this support level and just everything's not looking so good here. There's really not a lot of support until you get down here. And even that doesn't line up with much from before. The really the strongest area of support's all the way down here to $75. And given that ugly PMO, given the um, pro poor performance of that industry group, Micron's sort of hanging in there with the S&P and it's about even with what's going on in its industry group, which means it's not doing well. So um, Micron, the semiconductors, uh, just I don't think a good space to be in in the market right now. All right, so I promised a look at Nat Gas. So I wanna go and get that one. I think I have that one in here. I lost it, it was in a tab and now it's gone because that's just what happens, so. <laughs> All right, so my summary here, I can search my table and I want UNG and this is the most recent one here. All right, so I talked about um, natural gas back on April 14th as we were just getting that break uh, above the confirmation line for this double bottom. So we informed subscribers, I think I even wrote about it maybe in, in the free blog as well, uh, in chart watchers, but in any case, we were looking for a continuation. Now the issue we're coming against right now is overhead resistance is, is coming up. So we, everything still looks good. You know, I'm, full disclosure, I do own UNG and I'm still holding it. Uh, we still have that 20, 50 day positive crossover. The PMO is still looking very healthy. The OBV is confirming this concurrent rally. Um, you know, the RSI is positive, it's not overbought. So I am expecting it to break out above this resistance level. Now, if it gets up there and it starts to falter, that might be our time to take a little bit of our profits and you know, either hold part of a position, a partial position, or just get completely out and wait for a better entry because UNG does tend to offer us some good entries. But you know, we do get these busted patterns. There's a busted cup and handle, a busted double bottom, and then a bu busted <laughs> triple bottom. I mean, we, we see this a lot, so we wanna be very careful. And right now though, uh, and back here, it was really set up a lot better than we'd seen it in some time. So, so far, I think natural gas is just fine right now. I think that- What uh, is your rationale for the overhead resistance? The 200 day EMA here. And then we're looking okay. at this area, you can see the bottoms, that top, this bottom, that bottom. So 200 day EMA, and then this area of overhead resistance. Now, of course we could bring that resistance line all the way up here. But I think right now seeing these two together is really the picture we wanna know. And that is that there is some overhead resistance uh, arriving. Um, Greg Schnell was pretty um, optimistic about UNG this morning uh, as, as was I. So, you know, that means it's of course gonna turn down um, next week. <laughs> All right, and then you did take a look at GDX. Um, so what I think I'll do is look at GDXJ. I currently do own this one. So I was very happy to see uh, the bounce. I was very close to dropping it as it lost this 20 and 50 day EMA as support. Um, we had the PMO turning, but we didn't quite have that sell signal. So I decided to hang on um, with this bounce off of this level of support here. You can see those tops, that bottom. So we got the bounce we want and it, it, it did get above the 200 day EMA. And this was looking really ugly. And now we've got that PMO bottoming above the signal line. You can also see that the RSI is getting positive. So I have to say um, a nice little setup here on gold miners. And again, I know that um, I hate to keep referring to it, but it was great. Greg Chanel was in that trading room. If anybody is interested in the recording for that, just sign up for our free email list. I'll be sending that out later today. So if you just go to our homepage, you can sign up for the um, free uh, email list and, and then you'll get the recordings and the ways to sign up to go to those trading rooms. All right, so let's go ahead and I'm going to take us for a quick ride on the sector summary before I get us into the diamond of the week. 
So over the past week, you know, energy has certainly been um, the receiver of the um, of bullishness here. And financials really on the back of banks have been really um, outperforming as well. But one area that I had looked at um, about a week and a half ago was in real estate, because I was really liking the way this chart was starting to set up. And in particular, um, I was looking at the uh, hotel lodging REITs, retail REITs are looking good, but my diamond of the week is gonna be coming from the industrial and office REITs, fairly certain. So um, let's take a look first at that summary of X uh, to our really good chart here, sector one. And then we'll look at real estate really quickly here. And, you know, it's really been in a great rally. It's not even looking that toppy, I have to say. The PMO certainly is toppy, and, and we do have an overbought RSI right now. But as you can see, I mean, this, this has been overbought for 13, 12 trading days, so I'm not too concerned about that. We still have a lot of um, participation, 100%. With uh, on the BPI, the Silver Cross Index. So it's still got a lot of strength in there. It might be getting ready to run out, but I have to say, I, I found this particular diamond of the week and I, I just couldn't uh, resist here. Oh, this is in building materials. <laughs> I gave everybody that big overview of real estate, but I do still like real estate. Let me just, um, let's just look really quickly at that. I think it was I changed my diamond of the week, so that's where it got a little bit messy. But everybody got a nice look at uh, the real estate. So with uh, industrials, again, still on a really nice run here, making new all-time highs, PMOs starting to turn up. Yeah, this looks way better. <laughs> and we have participation going on, but it's not too overbought at this point. So a lot of support in there and you know, building materials. This is just a place that we're going to start seeing um, more action in. Is this with, your diamond uh, of the week? Yes, Thurman Group is my diamond of the week. Okay. Right here. So um, what we have is that nice base, that support was hit a second time, and now we're heading back up. So you could look at this as a possible double bottom, um, but mainly I like the way that it broke out above the 20 and 50 day EMAs, and we now today got a five day EMA crossover for the 20. You can see that the RSI is now positive. The PMO is turned up. We don't quite have the buy signal, the crossover, but we do like to try and catch these early. And then when you look at the performance, this is certainly the building materials has been really a great performer against the S&P really for a couple months since February. Uh, as far as this particular one, it hadn't been performing very well against the S&P, but you can see in this last week, it started to pick up and it's also starting to outperform its industry group here on the end. So those are the kind of the early signs that I'm looking for to do these. So I think that completes it. We don't have any more time left. I just wanna wish everybody a, a happy trading and a great week. Hey guys, Dave Keller here with stockcharts.com. Thanks so much for watching our video. If you enjoyed it and we hope you did, Hit the like button right below. Also, we have so much new content every day. Consider subscribing to the channel. Just hit the subscribe button in the video or right below. Thanks for watching. Stay safe. Have a fantastic day.